have a good time and then go. <laughs> but the good news is Allah will put barakah in this gathering. We come here to get the word from Allah. The angels will bring dhikr to us. Sakina will descend to us. So, Alhamdulillah, we're winners. Sorry, sir. Yes, sir. Say, uh, the I feel, I feel to speak uh, closer. Okay. No, no, they can hear me very well. And, um, I know, I know my, my voice is very distinctive, you know. Yes. People yes. recognize me from my voice, unfortunately. Yes, alhamdulillah. Yes. So, what is the topic? <laughs> Islam in a globalized world, encountering Islamophobia. So, I get different topics, unfortunately. So, Islam uh, in a globalized world, Islam uh, uh, versus Islamophobia, the burning of the Quran. So I wrote something. I don't know if it's it's something that is uh, beneficial or not, but we will see, inshallah. If it's not, so sue me. You know, what, <laughs> what can you do? I'm already here. They paid for the ticket. I'll have a good two weeks time, inshallah, and go back home without a problem. So I will speak about the Islamophobe. Now, when you say phobia, this is the fear of something. So there are people who have phobia from the dark, from closed places, from meeting people. So when we say Islamophobe, what is scaring them? What is making them frightened of Islam? Something they don't like. I can agree with that. I have no problem if people fear something in Islam and they don't like, I have no problem with that. Must everybody like Islam? No. You don't like Islam, no problem. But when you act aggressively, when you attack, this is not Islamophobe. There is a di big difference. So when someone speaks ill about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Excuse me, I'm an old man. Some of the brothers here, the youngsters, drink with their left hand. What's the ruling? Halal haram? Haram. The Prophet said alayhi salatu salam, if you drink, drink with your right. If you eat, eat with your right. If you give, give with your right. If you take, take with your right because shaitan eats, drinks, gives and takes with his left. So uh, while talking, I see people drinking with the left. I cannot stop them and say, Sheikh, please don't. And it's embarrassing. So this is a general reminder. Yeah. Never raise your hand, the left to the mouth. It's a sin. And the Prophet saw, alayhi salatu wasalam, someone drinking and eating with his left hand. So he said to him, eat with your right hand. The man out of arrogance said, I can't. So the Prophet said, may Allah make you never can. So the man's hand was paralyzed. <laughs> Very dangerous. I don't know why they're laughing. <laughs> this is serious. When you become paralyzed, this is serious. The Prophet made dua against you. So never raise your hand to the uh, left hand to your mouth. Now I'm wasting time so that one hour is finished. <laughs> the, the topic can be easily finished in five minutes, but just to accommodate time. So, when they started to speak ill about the Prophet ﷺ, depicting pictures, Charlie Hebdo in France, in Sweden, in uh, Holland, writing things about the Prophet ﷺ, this is not Islamophobe. This is hatred. This is aggression. When they started burning the Quran and disrespecting it. And this started in 2005 in Guantanamo Bay when the American soldiers wanted to torture the Muslim prisoners. And the Muslim prisoners did not do anything. So they did not know what to do. So they started to take the Quran tear it up, throw it in the toilet, and the Muslims were outraged. This is what they did. And they started to try to disrespect the Quran 
in Bangladesh, in Afghanistan, in Europe, in Germany, in uh, Sweden, in many, many different countries. Then they started to attack the hijab. First, they started to attack the niqab of women. Okay, we take the niqab off. They started attacking the hijab, the head covering. No problem, we take it off. They started attacking modesty. So even if a girl goes to, ho to, to the school wearing decent clothes, no, no, you have to wear bikini, go to the swimming pool with other boys. This is serious. This is they're forcing girls and boys in Sweden, in Norway, in Denmark to have physical education mixed. How can I take my daughter there? How can I take my son? When my son is a teenager and he sees his classmate with him, we say we're Muslims, said, no, this is not, not good. So it's okay, we want homeschooling. No, we will put you in prison and we will take your children and give them to Christian families. This is what they're doing in Sweden, by the way. All immigrants, Syrian, Iraqis, Afghanis who go there, few months, they take the children, why? Physical abuse, child abuse, you're not good parents. And they give it to Christian families. And this is democracy? This is Islamophobe. No, it's not Islamophobe. It's hatred against Islam. So when you look at this continuous attack against Islam, why? What did we do to them? In Indonesia, how many Muslims, mashallah? 300 million? 240? I am not very good in math. So <laughs> let's make it an even number, 300 million. 300 million Muslims, mashallah. What did you do to them? Why do they hate you? If we wanted to be aggressive and we wanted to fight and hate them, if we spit, on them, they will drown. If you just Muslims, you just, they will drown. The whole country will drown. So many Muslims. So why do they hate Islam? Now, they hate Islam because they are bullies. They came 100 and 150 years ago. They took our lands. They took our wealth, they enslaved us in India, in here, Holland, in, in all Muslim countries were conquest by these disbelievers. Now we're becoming, alhamdulillah, a strong power. We're becoming independent. They don't want this. They want us to be their slaves. So they are bullying us. Now what? does a bully want when someone bullies you? What does he want when your boss at work bullies you? When your husband, I'm talking to the sisters, not to the, <laughs> the gents said, he knows, he knows. No, I'm not talking to you. So when your husband bullies you, what does he want? When your mother-in-law bullies you, what does she want? Every bully wants a negative reaction from you. He wants you to be depressed, to be sad, to be intimidated. So this is what a bully usually wants. So if we react like they want, they win, we lose. So what to do when some people start bullying us about our religion. We have one or two solutions. Number one, do what they want. So they start to curse the Prophet ﷺ. What should we do? Yalla, bismillah. Let's go demonstrations. 100,000, 500,000 protest, demonstration, carrying banners, everyone, their political agenda. So a banner for this organization, banner for that organization. And they go, mashallah, hundreds and thousands of people. In the process, 
we burn some shops, we break cars, we uh, attack the police. The police are Muslims, <laughs> they're relatives. No, no, no problem, we love the Quran. <laughs> Allahu Akbar, takbir. <laughs> what are you doing? Said, no, no, we are avenging the Quran's burning. They're burning it in Sweden, not here. Said, no, no, we have to show them. So what will happen? They will win, we will lose. Look at those who's, who are protesting. MashaAllah, Akhi, Salaam Alaikum, why are you protesting? Because I love the Quran. How much do you memorize from the Quran? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Do you know Sunnah? He said, Do you pray? He said, uh, Yes, every Eid. Alhamdulillah, I pray Eid prayer. So when you look at the people, it's their enthusiasm, it's their love to Islam. But this is not Islam. The Prophet did not tell you, Alayhi Sallam, do this. So this is reaction number one. When somebody bullies you, you do this. Now, some Muslims, reaction number two, they don't do anything. Why? The vast majority of Muslims don't care. Why? Because it doesn't concern them. Akhi, they're burning the Quran. So? This is the word of Allah. Okay. So what are you going to do? I don't know. Why? Because they don't know the Quran. They have no connection with the Quran. And the vast majority of Muslims today, if I say, <laughs> Which surah is this ayah in? <laughs> See, little, little people are, are laughing. <laughs> the vast majority are saying, Google search, yes, Seri. What I is this? <laughs> this is not an ayah. This is a hadith. Ha ha ha, good. Sheikh, wallah, you're very funny. I wasn't joking. This is a hadith. And the sad thing is, 99% people don't know. And this is the most famous hadith in Islam. The most famous hadith in Islam. Innam al-a'malu bin niyat. Imam Shafi'i says, Islam revolves on three hadith. One of them, إِنَّ مِلْ أَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Hadith Umar. The second one, Hadith Aisha. مَنْ أَحْدَثَ فِي أَمْرِنَ مَا لَيْسَ مِنُّ فَهُوَ رَدْ The third, ayahs is mashallah. They don't know the difference between ayah and hadith. Are you Muslim? He said, yes. Where? Show me. So this is reaction two. Reaction one, let's burn property, let's break cars, let's attack the police. Reaction number two, nothing. So what is it that we're supposed to do? Now, Islam is a civilized religion. Because if they burn the Quran, we bring the Bible and burn it. <laughs> Have you seen any Muslim burn the Bible? Oh. Subhanallah. Why? Because we're civilized. We're Muslims. We agree that this Bible is not the correct Torah and the correct Injil. It has been altered. It has been changed. But we do not insult your religion. I don't agree with your religion. But I don't insult your religion. Why? Because Allah told me not to do so in the Quran. Allah says, وَلَا تَسُبُّوا الَّذِينَ يَدْعُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ فَيَسُبُّوا اللَّهَ عَدْوًا بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ This is ayah, by the way. Huh? <laughs> this, is, this is Quran. What does it translate to? Allah says, and do not insult those they invoke other than Allah. The idols they worship, don't insult it. It's idols, shirk, kufr. Allah says, don't insult their idols. Why? Lest they insult Allah in enmity without knowledge. When you insult my idols, I will insult what you worship, which is Allah. No, stop. Don't. So Islam is a 
very, very high civilized religion, not like them. They don't believe in religion. They don't believe in Christianity. They don't believe in anything. They believe in their corrupt ideology. So how and what is the best way to deal with such, I wouldn't say Islamophobe. I would say how to deal with such aggression, hatred, and enmity against Islam. We have to turn the table on their heads. And this is what I tell people that bully you. When people bully you, you should turn the table on their heads. How? By not reacting as they anticipate. Sometimes I communicate with people of ignorance and they don't like my approach. They don't like the way I speak. Like a lot of Muslims, alhamdulillah. They don't like what Sheikh Asim says because he's very aggressive. He's, he puts it in your face. He doesn't, you know, he's not diplomatic. He's not yani, soft. He put it in your face and leaves. I don't care. So they don't like what I say. So after arguing with them, some of them may become a little bit aggressive. And he said, Wallahi, Sheikh, you don't make any sense. You're an ass. <laughs> I said, yes, this is my nickname, ass I am. <laughs> So my students come and say, Sheikh, they're insulting you. I said, no, no, this is my nickname. Uh, this is how my name is spelled, A-S-S-I-M. <laughs> this is my name. So they said, no, 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 Sheikh, they are insulting you. I said, listen, when someone comes to me and said, hey, ass, am I going to grow two ears and a tail? <laughs> Do I care what people say about me? No, I know myself. When you say, oh, Sheikh, you are the best Sheikh, Am I going to, you know, become like a balloon? No. <laughs> and when you come to me and say, Sheikh, you're the worst Sheikh, am I going to be sad and start crying and weeping? <laughs> I know myself. I don't need you to evaluate me. Likewise, when they attack Islam, when they are aggressive against the Quran or the Prophet, والسلام, I will not go to their level and do what they want me to do. I will react positively. Someone comes to you and says, you're like this, you're this, you did that. You Don't defend yourself because he will continue to argue with you. Don't go into debates. Just give a big smile and take your mobile and check your WhatsApp messages. <laughs> Let him speak, 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 speak. After one hour, he will look around and he will, he will feel ashamed because you're not reacting. So any bully that comes to you said, look at you. Your dress is not nice. Look at you, Sheikh. You're wearing a dress like women and you're wearing hijab. <laughs> a big smile. Okay. Then what? Nothing. I'm not going to answer you. So this is number one. We have to ignore them. We have to not give them any attention. Rather, we have to be proactive. How? Number one, they insult the Quran. What should we do? Glorify the Quran. How to glorify the Quran? Okay, you're insulting the Quran in Sweden. Today, inshallah, every day I will study the Quran for one hour. I will read the Quran. I will memorize one page. I will learn the tafsir. And next week, I will come with five, six brothers, and we will meet in the masjid, in a tanweer masjid, huh? Sheikh? Good? Okay. They will come here <laughs> to... I'm, bu I'm bullying Abu Anwar Abbas, that's why he's checking his uh, WhatsApp message. <laughs> so, we come to the masjid, we study the Quran, and we start sending SMS and WhatsApp messages about this beautiful ayah we spread the beauty of the Quran and we memorize it and we spread it between the people. One of the most beautiful reactions I have seen in the world for this burning of the Quran, what Kuwait did. Beautiful. Kuwait is a very tiny suburb of Jakarta. Yeah, the all Kuwaitis, maybe 200,000. 
So what did they do? They printed 100,000 copies of the Quran in Swedish. And they will go and give it to the Swedes. So you burn it, no problem. We will distribute it <laughs> to 100,000. Now, some of the Swedish people, they say, what is the Quran? I don't know, Google it. I don't know what the Quran, when they get a copy, let me read. And maybe Allah will guide them to Islam. So see, this is proactive. This is positive thinking. Also, if you look at the Western world, America, Europe, Canada, they all collaborate. They are good, strong friends when it comes to attacking Islam. This is in the Quran. This is an ayah. Allah says, and never will the Jews and the Christians approve of you until you follow their religion. So they will never be happy with you and I until we follow their religion. Take off your hijab. I took it off. Shave your beard. This is for the men. <laughs> I shaved it. Okay, now eat pork. I don't like pork. No, you have to. Drink wine. Do this, do that. So you end up leaving your religion. Only when you leave your religion, they give you asylum. They give you residency. They accept you. But if you're abiding by your religion, they will never be happy with you. And this shows you how hypocrites they are. Every nation, they say, we are having freedom of speech. We have democracy. Our people are independent. We have no control over them. Now, who approved this attack against the Quran? The courts. They went to the court and they said, we would like to have permission to burn the Quran in front of the large masjid of the big masjid on the day of Eid. And look at the timing and look at the permission. The court looked into it, said, mm, Quran, okay, no problem. Bismillah. <laughs> <laughs> this is me, Bismillah, not, not them. They approved it. So why would you approve such a thing? Oh, Sheikh, because we have freedom of speech. We're not like you. You have freedom of speech, huh? Last week, the Muslim countries in the United Nations gave a resolution to make uh, um, attacking and insulting religious figures like Quran, the Prophet Muhammad, to be a crime. The majority approved. Who disagreed? Belgium, Finland, France, as usual, Germany, <laughs> Luxembourg, Britain, and America. Subhanallah. These are our favorite countries. I like Hollywood. <laughs> I like Taylor Swift. <laughs> why is they, why, why are they doing this to me? I love these people. Ah, because they say we have freedom of speech. Okay, you have freedom of speech, I agree. This is your right. Can I speak about Holocaust? The burning of the Jews at the time of Hitler. Can I say um, six million? I think this is a little bit too much. Maybe 6,000. If I say this, immediately they will put me in jail. I will not be able to do anything. It's a crime all over America and Europe. Why? No freedom of speech here. Okay. Can I speak about the LGBTQ plus, plus one, two, three? <laughs> we don't have any alphabet. Alphabets are all gone. They took it. <laughs> so can I speak? I said, no, this is hatred, Sheikh. I didn't hate anything. I just saying that this is against Islam. I said, no, this is why we will ban you in UK. We will ban you in Australia. We will ban you in New Zealand. We will ban you in America. We will ban you in Europe. What did I say? I just said it is prohibited in Islam and in Christianity and in Judaism. This is... What's in the book? I didn't say kill 
I didn't say throw, don't fall. <laughs> I didn't say throw anything from a building or stone. No, no, nothing. I just said that this is a mental illness. He said, no, this is, what is freedom of speech? So why is freedom of speech only limited to attacking Islam and the Muslims and, and, and the likes? Therefore, when we look at their independence, the people are independent. We have no control of them. Yes, in Arabia, you control the people. In the Middle East, you control the people. But in, uh, in the Western world, no, no, they are free to say whatever they want to do. Okay. In this case, we have to speak to them in their own language. What is their own language? We will not attack. We will not kill. We will not burn. We will not break. We will not destroy anything. What is the language they understand? Who elected the officials? The people. Who elected the judges? The people. The people, what do you say about burning the Quran? It's freedom of speech. Okay, alhamdulillah, you agree. In this case, I will speak to you with the language you understand. 240 million, let's assume. Muslims in Indonesia, boycott Swedish products. Don't buy anything Swedish. Oh, no, this is crime. Why are you doing this? You are hurting our economy. Freedom of speech. <laughs> I'm just telling the people, don't buy Volvo. I don't know, Volvo is uh, Swedish? <laughs> Not anymore, I think Tata owns it. Oh, no, it's Indian. Yeah. Hmm. Ikea. Ikea. Ikea, oh, Ikea. I don't want to get into politics, maybe the owner of Ikea here. <laughs> Generally speaking, if we boycott these countries that are insulting our religion, Alhamdulillah, we have many other alternative substitutes why insist on buying this? If we do this, they will feel the burn. They will feel the pain. And we will honor our religion. And also, we have to support the aqidah of al-wala wal-bara. This is an essential part of our religion. What is al-wala wal-bara? Al-wala is loyalty. So he's my Muslim brother. I'm loyal to him, but he's from a different country and he doesn't speak Arabic. No problem. He's Muslim. He says, Ashadu la ilaha illallah. He's my brother. And this one, he is Christian, but he's an Arab. And he's neighbor to me. No, he's not my brother. My brotherhood with you is Ashadu la ilaha illallah wa Ashadu Muhammad al abduhu wa rasuluh. And our allegiance to the Quran, to Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam. This is our brotherhood. So we have to revive this loyalty and to also disavow those who do not relate to our aqidah and show them that we have this brotherhood in Islam. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, there has already been for you an excellent pattern in Ibrahim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and those with him. When they said to their people, indeed. Now their people is what? Is mushrik, kuffar. So they said to their own people, inna bura'a'u minkum. Indeed, we are disassociated from you and from whatever you worship other than Allah. We have denied you and there has appeared between us and you animosity and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. This is what we have to have in our religion. You're a Muslim, you are my dear brother. I don't like you, but you're my brother. I will support you, I will help you. I will stand next to you in salah, toe to toe, shoulder to shoulder, and we will eat from the same food. I will help you. But if you are not a Muslim, or if you are a openly sinner, I cannot have this friendship and closeness with you. Among the ways and the best ways to counter this aggression against Islam is to give da'wah. And Muhammadiyya gives da'wah. This is the role of Muhammadiyya, is to give, how to give da'wah? Sheikh, I'm not a good speaker. 
or a loudspeaker. I'm not very good in giving speech. I'm not very good in writing articles. How to give da'wah? Akhi, who said da'wah is only giving khutbah? Da'wah is being a Muslim. That's all. If you do not lie, if you do not cheat, if you do not say bad words, everybody recognizes you as a good Muslim. This is Islam. This is the best da'wah. When you come on time, nine o'clock, and you leave on time, five o'clock. But when you come 10.30, and you spend half an hour eating breakfast, and one hour before Adhan Dhuhr, you go make wudu and mashallah, go to the masjid, pray 10 or 15 or 20 rak'ah, and then pray Zuhur, and then pray, pray another 500 rak'ah, and you go to the office at 3.30, then have lunch and read the newspaper, and leave, and leave 4.30 telling your friend to sign on your behalf. What is this? You're not a real Muslim. So to be a real Muslim, and to give a good da'wah is what Allah says in the Quran. And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and does righteousness and says, indeed, I am of the Muslims. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالْ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ This is the best form of da'wah. If people see me in Siberia, in Alaska, in Europe, in Saudi, I'm the same. Maybe I will be wearing jeans and t-shirt, but I'll be the same. I will not change. The, the clothes don't make a difference. My behavior, my attitude, my smile. I don't smile a lot, but <laughs> drink with your right hand and not your left hand. So we do our level best to give da'wah all the time because I'm a proud Muslim. And I'd like everyone to become as proud as I am. Finally. Good? Mm, good. Okay. <laughs> Finally, don't fear for the Quran. Because Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna Lahu lahafidun. Indeed, it is we who sent down the message, that is the Quran, and indeed we will be its guardian. It's protected by Allah. Imagine, this is the beauty of the Quran. If we bring all copies of the Quran in the world and we burn it today, all, not a single copy is kept. Tomorrow, we will write an exact copy of the Quran in no time. Why? Because we have at least 100 million hafiz. Knowing the Quran by heart, every single letter in my masjid, I pray, lead the prayer, and I make a mistake in one ayah. Nine-year-old child behind me <laughs> corrects me. After I finish the, uh, 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 the salah, I hold him from his neck. <laughs> Do I? No, I say, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah, I rub on his head and I say, may Allah make you Imam of the Muslimin in Haram. And I congratulate because he is preserving the Quran. So don't be more Roman than the Romans in the sense that the Quran, they burn it. I am sad, but I will not react like they want me to do when we have an old copy of the Quran in the house, torn or maybe some uh, uh, soup or some uh, uh, soft drink was spilled on it. What do we do with it? To protect it, what do we do with it? We burn it. We burn the Quran because we want to preserve it. We burn the Quran to honor it, not to humiliate it. So they do it to humiliate it but we do it to honor it. So at the end of the day, Allah will preserve and protect his religion, his book, and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahu a'lam wa nisbatul ilmi alayhi aslam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad.
time. I'm not going to speak more. <laughs> but I think we'll be opening for the questions. Yes. Uh, I think for Ahwat, uh, you can send a message to our admin in Instagram or, or to WhatsApp and we'll proceed to the question to check. Uh, just to uh, avoid the of the lovely sound of their Okay, uh, yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih sebelumnya kepada Abdul Muhammadiyah Tamir sudah menyediakan diskusi ini. Thank you all. Thank you. Thanks also for Sheikh Asif, but all of you. Amin. Glad to meet you in person right now. So because I usually look at you on YouTube with your boom sound effect and perhaps I think. The vast majority of those that come here um, uh, also uh, look on, look your, looks on you on YouTube. So, um, since the vast majority of, of the audience here are in Indonesia, I will ask you uh, in Indonesia also, but because, because it's the important topic. So, okay. Topic yang akan saya tanyakan, tadi Sheikh juga sempat mention di awal tentang bagaimana caranya untuk menghadapi hatred dari orang luar gitu ini tentang eksternal mungkin kita semua udah tahu gitu untuk menghadapi hatred dari orang non muslim padahal menjadi muslim lain tapi di Indonesia sekarang isu tentang mungkin kalau saya sebut kata bintah itu akan jadi satu hal yang mungkin merinding gitu sama orang gitu mungkin sebagian orang di sini akan merinding apa sih bintah? gak usah lebih berikan, gak usah lebih abitai orang lah Uh, so there is an issue among the community mm. tend to say bit mm. mm. about the actions or about the ritual ways mm. of other groups of Muslims. Mm. Mm. This is the issue that he raises, raising. What's your take on this? I mean, bagaimana caranya bagi kita sebagai kaum Muslim itu bisa menerima freedom of speech dari kawan-kawan kita yang mungkin masih menganggap kita kita atau mungkin masih menganggap kita um, belum mengikuti sunnah. Bagaimana so, caranya where, untuk where is the position of freedom of speech mm-hmm. on this matter? Mm-hmm. Orang-orang yang mungkin masih melihat kita kita, padahal mereka Sebenarnya salah satu cerminan Islam yang baik. Mungkin itu dari saya karena menurut saya topik ini sangat penting karena ini bisa mungkin bisa merusak Islam dari dalam itu sendiri. Kita dibuat pecah, kita dibuat tidak intoleransi terhadap kawan-kawan kita yang menjalankan musuh yang baik. Barakallahu Sheikh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. <laughs> So I will assume that I understood what he said. <laughs> But if Sheikh Zallah explains it to me that there are sects and cults that are involved in bid'ah. So where is the freedom of speech when we want to denounce their bid'ah? And is this the right thing? Okay. First of all, Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, Ud'u ila sabili rabbika, huh? What is hikmah? Wisdom. And maw'id al-hasana, fair preaching. So if I see someone doing bid'ah, should I put him on the ground and start jumping on his stomach? (laughs) Is this logical? If you're doing bid'ah and I come to you and say, what is this? You're in hell. You are doomed in hell. You are ignorant imbecile. Will you accept from me? You will not accept. There is a 
an art. Da'wa is an art. It's diplomacy, it's wisdom. So first of all, it's a very, very important issue for the youth, especially the youth. Why? Because the youth are very young. So what, Sheikh? Youth, young, of course. <laughs> we understand it. No, 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 you did not get what I meant. The youth, like they say, I'm hot-blooded. Baby, can't you see? I have this fever of 103. So I'm hot-blooded. You know, I just want to kill people. I want to destroy. I want to do something. Why? This is the youth. They can't control themselves. No, number one, you have to control yourself. Because in Islam, we judge things by the consequence. What do you mean? If I do this, what will happen? It w this and this, or this and this. Okay, then I have to do whatever is good. Because when my actions lead to good, I do it. When my actions lead to harm, I refrain. Like the ayah, do not insult the idols they worship so that they would not insult Allah Azza wa Jal. So I will stop. So I have to look. When I see bid'ah, some people make it their role in life like a fly. You know fly? Mm -hmm. yeah. They fall on food, on uh, uh, waste, on dirt, on garbage. So whenever they see it, bid'a, haram, bid'a, haram, bid'a, haram, bid'a, haram, haram, haram. Nobody will accept this from you. People have to love you, have to respect you, have to know that you want good for them, then they will accept. Some of the youth, the moment they are guided to Islam and they start practicing sunnah, mashallah, tabarakallah, they start to grow the beard, the thobe goes short, they put the muswak in, very good. <laughs> it's only five days. <laughs> huh? And they start controlling. Abba, this is not good. Haram, you're doing kufr. You go to hell. <laughs> Mother, what are you doing? This is not appropriate. You have to wear the hijab. You should not sit with my uncles. You should not listen to music. You should not look. My sister, my brother. How will they treat him? Get out of the house. Go. <laughs> go somewhere. It's your mistake. Because you don't have knowledge, you don't have diplomacy. You have to know the consequence. If I do this, what will happen? Big problem, stop. Little problem, mm, no problem, bismillah. Go ahead. So now we come to the people who do innovation. It is not my role to criticize. Oh, jama'a X, they're innovative. Jama'a Y, they're very bad. Jama'a W is this, and I just, Pick and choose. Who's right? Only me. <laughs> I'm the only one who's on the sunnah. Everybody else is in hellfire. This is, <laughs> this is wrong. To show people what Islam is. Not to attack others. So you following the sunnah, following the Quran and sunnah with the understanding of the three favorite generation, teach the people this. Instead of attacking this jama'ah, this group, this people, this maulana, this... No, no, don't attack. Just present Islam as it is. In, me, in the meantime, yes, we say. For example, we go and pray in Fajr in the masjid. This is a new bid'ah. Now everybody's looking, hmm? <laughs> a new bid'ah every day after Fajr, Salah, and dhikr, people make sajda. What is this? Says sajda shukr. Every day? Said, yes, Allah has given me so much. This is bid'ah. Would you say this? He looks at you. He's Wahhabi from Saudi. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Subhanallah. Akhi, did the Prophet do this sajda? No. Did the companions do this sajda? No. So do you know more than them? He said, no, no, this is sajda for Allah, not for you. Akhi, this is bid'ah. So you have to have diplomacy. You have to know how to speak to them. It's not very easy. I hesitate three, four times before I speak to someone because I know how he will feel against me. 
But I see him, I said, Salaam Alaikum. Immediately he looks, Wa Alaikum Salaam. How are you? Alhamdulillah, what do you want? <laughs> I said, Akhi, I find, mashallah, you always pray in the first row in the masjid. Mashallah, I love you for the sake of Allah. Very little people pray Fajr in the first row. Now he's, <sighs> okay, thank you. Yes, and mashallah, la illa billah, you make dhikr very good. Mashallah, people don't make dhikr. Now his guard is down. He's comfortable with me. And he said, but I'd like to ask you one question, but please, please don't be angry with me. I'm like your younger brother. He said, younger brother, you're 50 years older than me. What, <laughs> what younger brother? He said, yeah, yes. He said, Akhi, this sajda you're doing. I know in the fiqh book, there are two sajdas. Sajda tilawa, when I recite the Quran, and sajda shukur. He said, yes. Sajda shukur, the Prophet did, alayhi salatu wasalam, once in a lifetime. When they told him that the army has won, he made sajda. But what if my wife cooks good nasi goreng and ding ding and, 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 and uh, rangdang? So should I make sajda shukur? Said, no, she does this every week. Then what you're doing after fajr is not from the sunnah. Marish, please forgive me. Wallahi, 99.99%. They say, Allah khair, Shaykh, Barakallah feek, thank you, and they stop. It is shaitan who's making us, you know, hesitate and be afraid. But not everyone I have to go and say, Akhi, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. You have to be diplomatic and you have to present the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal instead of criticizing people. I don't know if this answers your question. Do you want it in Bahasa? Inshallah, the translation with, yeah. with the chef. <laughs> Inshallah. I would like to listen to this question from the audience. Uh, one Are you proposing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't know need their names. So one good uh, sharp question from her side is that how to answer or react from the Christian tribes that say Islam has many branches, including Shia, Sunni, Ahmadiyya, and other Islam organizations. How should we uh, answer upon this exact question? First of all, do I have to answer every question a Christian says against Islam? No. I have to present the real Islam. So when someone says Islam has many branches, uh, Shia, um, uh, Sunni, uh, Ahmadiyya, not Muhammadiyya, <laughs> Ahmadiyya, and, and so I said, listen, no, Islam has only one branch. It is the branch of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is Islam. Now, we talk usually to the Shia. When they say, no, you have to be Shia, you have to, I said, was the Prophet uh, Shia? And they said, mm, there was no Shia at the time of the Prophet. So Alhamdulillah, khalas. If there were no Shia at the time of the Prophet, why can't we be like the Prophet Ali Sassam? Khalas, end of story. So when they say to you this, you can say to them, okay, Christianity has Catholicism, the Orthodox, the Coptic, Protest Protestants, and they have many books, they have this and this and this. This is not something you can say about a religion. The religion of Islam is found in the Quran and the Sunnah. You want to ask me a question? Ask me about Quran and Sunnah. And I hope this answers your question. Are there any images to me? Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your knowledge. So, uh, as you mentioned, as you mentioned before, uh, there are so many countries that uh, about Islam, uh, and you simply would say, boycott that product, it might be a country of might be distracted. No, my question is about uh, if the uh, 
in the recent days, the media plays a significant role to shaping public opinion uh, about Islam. How do you think this impact effort to combat the Islam will be shared by media right now? Thank you. Okay, first of all, the media tries, but they will never succeed because the religion is not mine or yours. It's Allah. And Allah in the Quran said that he will give victory to his word and to his religion. So I have no problem with that. The problem is what did we do in the media to honor our religion? Now, if you go to the vast majority of Muslims, Instagram or Facebook or face hell, I don't know what, <laughs> uh, and you look into it, do you find in the timeline 10% about Islam? No. You will never find 10%, 5%, maybe 1%. And the rest is all about movies, about women, about their profile picture. I'm, I'm looking like this now today. <laughs> I'm good. I'm the, and, and you see pictures, what is this? Yeah, the people are proud of their pictures and it's ugly. But they say, no, well, it's good, it's nice. And you get likes. Likes of what, ya khi? If you put a picture of a dog, you will get likes. <laughs> so the Muslims are not honoring their Islam. So the media will continue to write things about Islam, but it will, nobody believes it. Nobody believes that this is bad about Islam because Muslims, alhamdulillah, are strong. But we have to see what have we presented to Islam. So when the media does bad things, what should we do? Burn, demonstrate, protest. No, we write good things about Islam. We be proactive and positive, inshallah. Uh, a question from, uh, from Akwa is about how do you forecast or read in the future the next 10 years of, the, of Islam itself and how do you need to be prepared for that in 10 years? My crystal ball is in the room. <laughs> <laughs> you love it. So I cannot forecast what will happen in 10 years time. What is this? <laughs> now, why, why do I say this? I could, have, I, I could have said, inshallah, in 10 years time, the Muslims will be stronger, the beards will be longer. <laughs> and but this is not reality. You want what's beneficial. What's beneficial is not what's in 10 years, what's today. You ask yourself, do I pray five times, on, uh, five, five times a day on time? Oh, Fajr Sheikh, it's very early. I can't, I pray it at seven o'clock and Dhuhr <laughs> is this and Asr. Sometimes I get sleepy, but Alhamdulillah, Maghrib, I pray on time. <laughs> and you want a forecast after 10 years? You'll be in hell. Well, pray on time, abide by the law of Allah Azza wa the Sharia, ah. deal with Muslims like Muslims. If you took their money unlawfully, give it back to them. Don't cheat, don't deceive. How is your relationship with your parents? Are you disobedient? Go and kiss their feet and say, I'm sorry and be good to them. How is your relationship with your kinship? I haven't seen my uncle in six years, why? because he lives in the next street. Subhanallah. You will never enter Jannah if you cut your kinship. And this is your forecast. Don't look about the Muslims forecast. Who cares? I don't care about you. I care about myself. If you all go to Jannah and I go to hell. <laughs> no, the hell with you all. You go to hell, I go to Jannah. <laughs> Let's be clear. I don't care about you. I care about myself. If I go to Jannah, inshallah, you all come. No problem. But I don't put you in Jannah and then, mm, maybe I go to hell, no. So don't care about the forecast. What will happen? Care about what Allah will ask you in your grave. What Allah will ask you on the day of judgment. This is all what you care about. As for the forecast, I know 10 years, 20, 100 years, Allah will make this religion victorious. So when Mahdi comes, when Isa, peace be upon him, 
descends, the victory would be inshallah to Islam. When? I don't know. But I will not wait <laughs> and say, inshallah Mahdi will come. Okay. <laughs> we need you to go and give a lecture. No, 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 Mahdi will come. Inshallah, everything is good. No, you have to act. You have to do something. You have to show Allah Azza wa your sincerity and then Allah will take care of his religion. MashaAllah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa So, if you read Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah speaks in the first two, three ayahs about Al-Mu'mineen. And then two, three ayahs about Al-Kuffar. And then eight, nine ayahs about Al-Murafiqeen, about the hypocrites. The hypocrites are everywhere. And in the beginning, there were no hypocrites in Mecca. Why? Because Islam was weak. When they went to Medina and Islam became strong, then the hypocrites appeared. Whenever Islam is strong, hypocrisy becomes widely spread because they are enemies of Islam. They cannot attack Islam. Because if they attack Islam, people will fight with them. So what to do? They work from underground. They put doubts in your head about Islam. Oh, this is not hadith sahih. No, hadith is not good. We only believe in Quran. What about the hadith? No, no, hadith may be corrupt, may be this. We don't believe in hadith. We are Quraniyun. We believe only in the Quran. Whoever believes in the Quran and rejects Sunnah is a kafir. I don't have to any sugarcoat it because Allah says in the Quran, you have to follow the Prophet, you have to follow the Sunnah. Whoever goes against the Prophet and follows other than the way of the believers, we will put him in hell. So we have to know that the hypocrites, they will come and try to undermine Islam. How to deal with them? We have to expose them. We have to show the people that this is against Islam without giving takfir. We're not ISIS. We don't give takfir. But we have to expose them. Allah says in the Quran, You should identify the hypocrites in the way they speak. You can tell that they're using crooked ways when they speak. They don't speak, قال الله, قال الرسول, no, والسلام, they try to undermine Islam. So we have to expose them. We have to show in the media whatever allegations they present, we put counter allegation. Because the jihad of the kuffar it was, is with the sword. The jihad of al munafiqeen of the hypocrites is with the tongue and with the pen. So this is the role of the ulama, the scholars. Whenever there is an attack on Islam, they come and clarify this for the Muslims, inshallah. Bapa, bapa, bapa. 
mungkin perlu apa memberikan apa kasih waktu First of all, the ulama who may be deviated and deviant and using other than the way of the Quran and the Sunnah, the best way to deal with them is to ignore the moment you reply to them you give them status you give them strength and people say oh i didn't know this let me check his profile his website and they will learn from them and this is one of the ways of bullying these deviant ulama when you walk and there is a dog that would bark at you Will you fall on your hands and knees and bark back? <laughs> if you're a dog, yes. <laughs> but if you're not, you will walk away. So these deviant ulama want attention. They want prominence. They want fame. If you talk to them, and unfortunately, 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 a lot of the Muslims are looking for fame. People come to me, say, Sheikh, mashallah, 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 you're very good in da'wah. Uh, pray to Allah that I become famous like you. <laughs> I pray to Allah, you never become famous. <laughs> Do you think we like being famous? Wallahi, I wish nobody knew me. Wallah, I wish that nobody knows me or think of me as famous. I don't want to be famous. So you ask or you learn knowledge for the sake of Allah, not to be a scholar, not to be a alim, not to be someone people watch you and follow you. No, you do it for getting close to Allah. If Allah wants to make you famous, yes. The vast majority of people nowadays, they want fame. So even du'at, unfortunately, every time you go to their website, Instagram, this is me in sun sunset. This is me at sunrise. This is me eating durian. MashaAllah. What is this? He says, no, no, this is for da'wah. What da'wah? Da'wah is teaching people, qala Allahu, qala Rasulullah and benefiting people. But you want fame. And most Muslims nowadays, they want fame. If they are not followed, they say things that is bad about Islam so that they would, people mention them. And this is very dangerous. It would take people to hell. May Allah protect us all. So we'll take two last questions, one from the Mandis and one from the in English or Arabic? In English or Arabic? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, my my English is a little bit, but I I in Italia the shape is not to take any action direction uh, to against the global Islam. But this is not related to our dignity before our as a Muslim who does not who doesn't accept his religion. His book, his God, his, mess, his, mess, his messenger, with the ghost media. In accordance with that, with what was complete by our scholar, Guru Hakka, Rahmanullah, if you are silent when your religion is involved, replace your clothes with shorts. Mungkin in dalam Indonesia-nya, tadi Syekh bilang itu bahwa kita tuh nggak boleh melakukan reaksi yang berlebihan terhadap apa yang menurut kita itu yang berlebihan tapi dalam ulangan kita ya sampelnya Uya Hanta dan Mablo berkata jika kamu diam terhadap Islam itu dihina maka tidak bisa terkaitmu dengan kain dapat when you are silent when Islam is insulted then put on the kafan on your body I don't know if I understood the question correctly but if I understood it, then 
alhamdulillah, if not, correct me. He's saying that we have to react. And I said, yes, we have to react, but your reaction can be positive and can be negative. A negative reaction is when you don't react. You don't do anything. You just sit I said, okay, no problem. A negative reaction is when you go in demonstration and you break, burn, uh, uh, demolish, and do things that are bad. The positive, the Islamic reaction is to take a number of steps. One, learn the Quran, spread it, social media, uh, printing books, doing da'wah, being a proper Muslim. This is the best reaction to it. Because when you just demonstrate and protest, this is what you find in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, in Indonesia, in other countries. Every time something happens, let's go to the streets. And people protest. Oh, mashallah. Then what? Nothing. Next week, protest, protest. This is not the doing of the companions, alayhi salatu wasalam, nor the tabi'een. This is against Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is for hooliganism. This is for uh, barbaric people to express whatever they want. And this is why even in politics, you don't like politics, let's go to the streets. This is not Islam. So it's, you have to govern and control your actions through Quran and Sunnah. Demonstration is not from the Quran and Sunnah. You honor your religion. You honor the Quran by the steps we mentioned earlier. And Allah knows best. One last question. Yeah. One last question. Uh, the question came on the YouTube and her uh, question. She was asking about your opinion on the involvement of women in politics. And is it, is it practical or Okay, so women will hate me. <laughs> Join the club. Welcome. <laughs> in Islam, let's look at women involvement in Islam. How many khutbah of Jum'ah did Mother Aisha give? And she's the most knowledgeable of all companions. How many? Zero. Mother Um Salama, zero. Um Habiba, Safiya, Hafsa, Zainab. All the mothers of the believers who are close to the Prophet and knowledgeable never participated in politics, never participated in public speeches. Nowadays we have beautiful sisters coming in my place and giving khutbah to men. And the men. <laughs> Good khutbah, good speech, better than Sheikh Asim. This is not halal. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, and this is in the masjid, we are in the masjid. The best raw for men is the first. The, the worst raw for men is the last. The best raw for women is the last. And the worst raw for women is the first. Why? Allah is telling you, keep women and men segregated and far away. This is what Allah says. This is what the Prophet taught, alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet said, nisa. Do not enter upon women. Meaning women are in a room, do not enter. So one man said, O Prophet of Allah, Araayt al hamu what about my brother to come into women? You know, the brother-in-law, my uncle, my relatives. I trust them. They're my, my relatives. The Prophet said, Alhamu al maut If you want death to come to your wife and, and, and women folk, allow your brothers and non mahram to come and mix. This is the Prophet saying, Aizusam. Nowadays, no, no, this was a sheikh 15 centuries ago. Now it's okay, it's free. We have Indonesia got talent. So <laughs> no problem. Women come and dance and sing. And, but alhamdulillah, wearing hijab. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. What is this? This is Islam. Don't say this is Islam. She's wearing hijab because her hair is Afro. <laughs> Not because she's fearing Allah. 
I, I see women wearing hijab and they wear leggings and they wear tight clothes. Yeah. They're covering their hair. Yeah, because it's not yani, well uh, prepared. This is not Islam. Women should be in their homes. They should teach women in schools, in universities, only women. The moment a woman mixes up with man, we have Monica Lewinsky versus Bill Clinton. <laughs> Bill Clinton, American president, married to a beautiful Hillary Clinton. That was 30, 40 years ago when she was, anyhow. Yet he cheated with an intern because this is free mixing. So no, women in politics is zero accepted in Islam. You stay with the women, teach them and, and be with them and mix with them as you wish. Seven days a week, no problem. The moment you come with men, this is not a very good and positive thing at all. I don't have closing statement. I finished. No, no, alhamdulillah. Okay? <laughs> We're fine. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi wa ahdahu wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Muhammadin ya rabbillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala. Sharafumuna al-Rashid bi huzurikum bi hadha al-Majlis. Wa laqad tanawar hadha al-Majlis bi huzurikum. Wallahi yani al-Watad qasir jiddan. Allah alaikum. Bistimai khutbatikum al-Jamila. Wa hunak al-Baghzat. أود أن أقدم ولكن نلاحظ بحضوركم لأن هناك دما أندونيسيا يصل في جزائركم الحمد لله ولذا اسمحوا لي أن أدعوكم شيخ عصيم الحكيم حزبوان Brothers and sisters in Islam it is indeed a very special moment for us but 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 Bahasa Indonesia ya, jadi luar biasa. Uh, biasa kita nonton di YouTube, namun sekarang uh, kita langsung uh, bertatap muka dengan Syekh Asim Al Hakim Sibuan. Dan banyak uh, beberapa poin yang penting kita catat dalam pertemuan ini terkait dengan tema utama di pengajian uh, kajian ahad pagi ini di Masjid At Tanwir tentang uh, Islam di dunia global menghadapi Islamofobia. Islamofobia merupakan fenomena yang bukan e, sebuah imajinasi, tapi kenyataan. Ini seolah-olah menjadi kontinuitas dari perang salib. Dua kebencian antar umat yang berbeda, yang kemudian sampai pada era modern, di mana Eropa dengan Eurocentriknya masih ya memandang Islam sebagai di negara Islam, lalu kemudian imigran-imigran muslim semakin bertambah, lalu ada semacam xenofobia, rasisme terhadap orang-orang yang memiliki peradaban, budaya, dan agama yang berbeda. Jadi dari rasisme dan xenofobia, kemudian muncul sifat-sifat agresif yang dibangun secara sentimental oleh beberapa orang, kita tidak bisa mengatakan Eropa seluruhnya benci Islam, kita tidak bisa mengatakan Kristen semuanya benci Islam, kita tidak bisa mengatakan Yahudi semua benci Islam, terdapat ada oknum-oknum, ada kelompok-kelompok, seperti partai-partai Islam, eh partai-partai sekuler di Belanda, di Jerman, atau tokoh-tokoh yang memang betul-betul benci ya terhadap Islam, seperti Jean-Marie Le Pen dari Prancis atau Great Wilder dari Belanda, ya, atau Rasmus Lapidan ya dari Swedia, atau kemarin pas hari raya Idul Adha pembakaran Abu dengan sengaja untuk kemudian menciptakan satu kebencian antar manusia. Tetapi apa yang disampaikan oleh Syekh Asim Al Hakim itu menunjukkan betapa Islam harus ditunjukkan pada aspek rahmat dan lalainya. Kita tidak ingin menari sesuai dengan gendang yang mereka tampu. Kita tidak ingin kemudian merespon secara agresif sebagaimana mereka ingin 
mancing emosi kita, tetapi kita harus kemudian menunjukkan bagaimana Islam itu indah dengan cara menguatkan secara internal umat Islam. Tadi sampaikan ada glorifying Allah. Lalu kemudian merepresentasikan dalam living Quran, Quran yang hidup dalam kehidupan kita. Lalu juga strengthening iman, menguatkan keimanan kita melalui apa? Melalui akhlak kita yang terbaik. Ya, tidak akan kemudian umat lain akan menghargai dan menghormati kita sebagai representasi Islam yang hormat dan alamin. Maka.